So you're telling me somebody is making a spoken word from their speech and they're sending up opportunities to maybe win a Grammy. Absolutely. This is real life right now. This right? is absolutely. I teach, when I teach about the industry, I, don't, I may not teach you like you'd learn in, you know, like when you go to university. I take what they learn in the university and apply it to the real world. In the golden age of the speaking business, some of the most renowned speakers like Tony Robbins, Jim Rohn, and Zig Ziglar have built empires around their audio programs. We saw speakers turn their live presentations into multi-million dollar businesses. Many speakers have tried to duplicate the success. However, it seems like they forgot how important audio programs were for many of the legends. Today, incorporating music gives us even more possibilities. With this podcast, we will explore them all. Hey, what's up? It's Sean Bracey with Motivator Music here, and uh, we are live in studio right now. I'm super, super happy, super inspired to be, you know, blessed by the presence of our first official guest on this Seven from the Stage podcast. She's been in the music industry for years, decades, you know, helping people secure licensing deals and um, it's a bunch of stuff other than that. But I, I let her get into it, you know, uh, I'd like to introduce, introduce Jessica Alvarez. Thank you so much, Sean, and I am honored that you um, reached out so I could be a guest on your show, and I'm excited about what you're doing for everybody out there with your podcast. Thank you so much. Um, well, I have to say, I started in the industry not doing sync licensing, as I was mentioning to somebody earlier. I started out as an artist, nice. a songwriter myself, born to a Cuban father that was a iconic famous Cuban performer down in Cuba and then in New York and then met my mother and they both did it together. So I come from a family of performers and, and that's, I continue the legacy of staying in the music business. Started out making music, being a performer, touring in Asia. Wow. And then later, so I understand that side of the artist very well. And then later on, I um, started writing songs at the age of 12 actually. And during the pandemic, I, um, Right when the pandemic started, I had placed a song on Netflix. It was a classic Bolero remake That's with my dear and deal. yeah yeah there you go with my dear friend uh, No Man. He produced it. He used to be the musical director for Babyface, and uh, we did this Bolero. And he says we might get placed, we might not get placed. A lot of things are going on. February comes on the uh, series on uh, Netflix called Gentified. And uh, gente fight for gente those Latinos fight. out there, gente fight. And um, we got it on there. And then later on, I was working with another producer by the name of Mr. Brian Thompson, and he had a movie. And the movie was about the Dreamers and the Dream Act. You know, people that come to the United States try to make it, you know, land of opportunity because we know it is. And um, he said, send me set six songs. Let's see if we can get it into the movie. You know, I've got another partner. You know how that works. We'll maybe pick one or 30 seconds of the song. And he ended up sending me the trailer, and there were six, all six songs were in there, Ooh. including the instrumental that I sent by mistake. So I was, I, I said to myself, wow, 100%. this is amazing, amazing. And I realized there was not only opportunities, but also money. And during the pandemic, a lot of my friends, I mean, whether they were working with famous artists or they were just emerging artists, whatever level, they were out of work. They weren't touring. Ouch. Everybody was frustrated. They couldn't put food on the table. And I said, I got to do something. You know, there's something, there's a calling. And so I decided to go back to school, went to Berkeley, nice. got my degree as a music supervisor, my credentials. And I said, you know what? Um, do I go work for corporate or do I do my own thing? And I've always been an entrepreneur. You know, I had a record label with my brother before, and and I had a travel agency with another friend. I've always been immersed in the music and in the arts industry. And I said, you know what? I'm going to do my own thing. So I decided to start Sync Musica. Ooh. And the reason for the Musica is not just because we cater to Latin, but we're based out of Miami. We do have an office in New York as well, recently. But um, that's that's where I was born. But we decided to do the Sync Musica to expand it, you know, kind of right. make it diverse, add, you know, a little diversity there to it. And so Sync Musica 
which is on um, all the social medias. You just put S Y N C and Musica with an A at the end, and it's on all the social medias. Um, S Y N C. Yes, that's it. Musica on all the social medias. You can go ahead and check it out and see what we've been doing. So we started with securing licensing for different opportunities. Film and TV was the first opportunity. And then um, as I started getting, I had so many musicians that we knew, um, and calls and friends and reaching out to friends, I realized that nobody knew what having your music sync ready meant. They had no clue. Mm. And there's a lot of, how can I explain? There's a lot of dimensions to having your music sync ready. And they didn't have it ready. And the first client I had, an iconic uh, Latino hip hop artist that was a trailblazer for Latino hip hop music, uh, Latin hip hop music. I met him at a conference and he says, you're doing great, something great for the, the community. Not just the Latin community, for the hip hop community, for everybody, everybody. <laughs> everybody. Yeah. And he says, I wanna be your first client. He says, here's my, my first album, I'd like you to, to sync it. Because I'm looking at things, I'm like, well, I can't sync it, you know, there were, collaborations with people that weren't cleared. So I'm gonna to go to my pet peeve right now. Your songs are intellectual property. When you buy a car, you get a title of that car, correct? correct? When you buy a home, you get the deed to the home. When you create a song, it is an intellectual property. Yeah. And you have to have your intellectual property cleared and claimed. Just because you put it on your Pro Tools or you put it on Logic and it's stamped to the computer, okay, doesn't mean that that's enough because you need to have your registrations properly cleared and claimed, which means your copyrights, which means your, you want to make sure you sign up to an organization, which is a, your PRO, so you can collect your performance royalties. Then you want to be able to collect your mechanical royalties. Then you want to be able to collect your street, non-interactive streaming royalties. And everybody goes, mm. oh my God, it feels like, I say that to an artist, and they go, that's way too much information. I don't want to do the back end, I just want to create. Right. So with that being said, we started doing what was called music clearance, and admin for artists, nice. which is the hard part. And we said, you go into the studio, you make your music, you create your music, and we're going to deal with the tough part. The part that's going to require hours of you sitting at your computer, putting things into an Excel file, registering everything, and we're going to assist artists. So we created a service, which is on the website, which the website is syncmusica.com, where people can go in and they can get their services that they need, whether it's admin, uh, we have other services that are by word of mouth. They're not on the, on the website, but they're all to help the artists. These are all artist services. So when I started this, it seemed like it was only gonna be sync. It became bigger than that. It became bigger than life for me because all of a sudden we were distributing artists. Uh, we have distribution through the Orchard, uh, the Orchard Sony, uh, digital distribution for the artists. We started helping them with copyrights, administration, and I think the most valuable thing was, when I would talk with an artist, is that I knew both sides. I had been an artist for so many years. And then now I was dealing with their business side, which also I knew well. But now the sync world, where I would say to them, if you stream, a, go ahead, you stream a song, oh, you get a thousand streams, you're gonna get a dollar. But if you put a song for 30 dollar. seconds in a movie, you were talking thousands. Five thousand. I mean, seconds? thirty seconds. It could be if it's in the right, because there's the right usage, and also how long they use it, where they use it, how they use it, and how long they use it makes a world of difference. And so when artists started, I realized that artists didn't know this. I said, get your sync music sync ready. I'm on the board of directors of the Miami Web Fest, which is an independent film festival for web creators, nice. and. Independent film directors know musicians, so they go out, hey, you know, I know, my, my buddy plays guitar, my buddy has a band, and they'll put him in movies. And I spoke at the uh, Miami Web Film Festival when I launched the company a few years ago, and they weren't filling out so a particular paperwork mm -hmm. that they need to for their friends. You can give your friend a dollar, you're a film director, and you give your friend a dollar, to, or hopefully more, to have their music in the movie but they can still get money on the back end mm -hmm. if you fill out the proper paperwork, 
which are called cue sheets. And we also provide that, you know, assistance in that. So there's so much to the music industry. And I go on and on and on because I'm so passionate about it. And I really want, my mission statement is to empower, educate, and to help artists become more knowledgeable about how to monetize your music and how to protect their intellectual property. Because wow. it's as valuable as your car and as, you, and as your house. So that is, that is my passion with Sync Musica. I'm so blessed to uh, now at this point, after we're going to three years, I have um, a, six departments. We have six departments within Sync Musica. And the Sync departments, I have a program, which is an internship program. So for universities, if you're graduating as a music performance graduate, music business graduate, or a music uh, production graduate, you need to do, especially here in, here in Florida, we do the internship in Florida, you have to do 72 hours of credit before you graduate. So I make that possible. I sign off on them, they do 72 hours, I mm -hmm. mentor them, I teach them, I do the internship. We do it for about seven weeks, 10 hours a week. And then they'll do it for three months to get their credits. Some of them stay on another three months. Wow. Uh, because they love Sing Musica, they love what we stand for, the mission statement, and they get it. And then if they really do well, then I say, okay, you know what? Let's put you on internship pay and then they're working with St. Musica. So we have a label department. Uh, my assistant ended up after a year becoming director of operations. Uh -huh. um, the company is a female owned company. I'm Latina nice. and female owned company. But we have, I think we have more guys right now as team members as females, but we have such, how can I explain? When anybody says, what does a CEO look for in a, in a company that they're building a boutique company? You look for creative minds, hungry minds, mm -hmm. and that think out of the box. Yeah. That are looking to make a difference in the world. And hallelujah, amen, I've got it. I really do. I, I'm so blessed with having an amazing team. Did you hear that, T? <laughs> that's great, you know, and with there being so much to the music industry and thinking outside the box, that's what we're trying to get speakers and authors to do with this podcast. And, you know, just introducing different music industry concepts is something that we definitely want to do. I want to, I'm happy that you're, you know, you're speaking, you're talking about all your experiences and these licensing deals and opportunities. 30 seconds in a film, people are chasing that. But more so, I think people are chasing the 30 seconds on streams or something, and they're not seeing that that's not even where the money is at. So um, I want to really help to educate these speakers on what's really possible when you introduce some of these concepts that you're talking about uh, with like licensing and things. So could you just kind of talk and speak on how you think speakers may be able to benefit from introducing maybe some of their speeches or words of wisdom in a film? Like, what would that look like? Is that even possible to do? But of course, of course, um, speech is powerful. You know, the right words can inspire, the right words can motivate, mm. and the right words can bring a group of people together to make a change. Wow. Yeah. And, you know, that's, that's really great. I don't think enough people really, really hear what you're saying. You know, we're always chasing a... The, the quick the quick dollar the all of these things that may not really serve you but if a speaker is able to really use their words utilize these right words to change and make change and you know get on these stages and, and, and monetize themselves and I think that's was really incredible so like as as you know within within what you're doing like when when you're when you're talking and educating your artists are there are there ever opportunities where you have to you know kind of get them out of that mindset of thinking, or could you give me an example of where, where you help the artist to, like, hey, you know, you're chasing this, but maybe you should look at it this way. Yes, yes, so we do webinars and workshops where we talk to the artists. I do a Zoom workshop, a webinar from a studio. It started back in New York in Times Square nice. when I was there last year. And it's a way to educate them and then be able to interact with us and ask questions. And what do we do? Mm. Most definitely. It's the best so your, way. So your <laughs> webinars, could you tell me more about your webinars? Because, like, I have so many clients that, you know, they, they're doing a lot of these webinars. They're writing books. But, you know, they're having trouble really standing out from the pack. But what I'm trying to do is really get them to, like, okay, it's, 
there's a reason why you're not standing out from the pack. Maybe it's because you're doing the exact same things as everybody else to market themselves, you know? So when you are able to differentiate, <laughs> you're able to really kind of um, <coughs> sorry about that. <laughs> you know, I understand. Uh, yeah, so I don't I don't know I don't really even know what else to tell them, you know? But it's like I was like, you know what? We're gonna start an entire podcast around monetizing, selling from the stage, so we can get get these people to look at different opportunities, you know, that exist for them, you know, out here. Don't follow a formula. Hmm. Create your own. Be a trailblazer. Figure out how to be authentic. Because yeah. everybody has, goes by a formula they watched or they learned from another person. You gotta learn the basics, yes. Mm-hmm. How to speak, how to not choke and cough. <laughs> <laughs> no, you got it. You, you, you're very smooth, you got it. How to um, be able to engage with what your audience wants. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, we want to copy other people that are doing, yes, emulate greatness, mm -hmm. but don't copy greatness. Mm -hmm. You know, be, be your own authentic self. You know, I am passionate about the music business. No two, way about, two ways about it. I love everything about it. But the biggest joy is like, when I speak at an institute, um, whether it's SAE or Broward College, and that moment when I look in someone's eyes and they get that aha moment, mm -hmm. go, oh, I get it. That's, I think, what every speaker should strive for. The aha moment. That aha moment when the person, people, you, or someone you're talking about in the audience goes, oh, I got it, I, I understand. And, um, when I do the webinars and the workshops, uh, I just did one for the first, I, even though I am bilingual, my English is better than my Spanish. And I did the first one in Spanish uh, last week. And as I talked and engaged with the Spanish audience, we had so, uh, a Cuban artist, we had Chileans, we had, as I engaged with the artist, I was able to um, listen to what they were, con their concerns were. So as a speaker, we, we're aware of the concerns that our audience has. Mm -hmm. I think that then we can really tap in to what they want to hear. Because I could talk forever. But what is it that you want to hear? What is it, what's the, the challenge you're having in your music, in your journey, musical mm -hmm. journey, in your um, genre? Because all genres have sometimes a little bit of a different, not everybody's, every artist is unique and different. And I tell that to each artist. Your journey's not gonna be like, you know, someone that's been doing it a while or someone that just started yesterday. But each story is just as valuable and everybody has concerns. So make sure when you're speaking to your audience, you know you know what they what they need. Like right now if you had Q and A, I'd be like excited because then I could, you know, tell them, Hey, what like are you have you ever made music? Yes. Okay. So what would you say is one of your challenges? that you'd want to answer to a speaker we're talking to you? Yeah, one of my challenges that I would want to answer to a speaker? That yeah, that you, something, a challenge, a question you would ask. Because you're, con in your, within your own career as, as a music maker, as a music creator is what I call mm -hmm. you. I would ask them, or I would figure out, why don't you make an album? Why don't you stand and spread your message and build community, you know? Because I feel like music is a great way to build community, you know, to take the audience with you. You know, like when you're performing music on stage, before you leave, your call to action could be, you know, hey, buy my album, download my album. Now, they're a part of your, you know, your family almost. They, get, they know all your business. You know, they know a bunch of stuff about you, and it brings them closer. So now they're engaging with all of your other products, or whatever you put out there. Mm -hmm. So it could just bring everything full circle and give people more of a reason to engage and buy anything you put out there, you know? So, like, that's that's what I would say. And that's something that, you know, a lot of artists sometimes forget or they are in the moment, and it's an important part of, it's and it's not selling yourself, it's just letting people know, engage with, how they can engage with you. Mm -hmm. You know, hey, look, find me on Facebook, find me on social media, check out my YouTube panels on Sig Musica, you know, and, and that's the best way to be able to, 
assist people to get connection with you, you know, and it is it is a wonderful thing. It is. Most definitely. I think it is wonderful and I think it's beautiful and more people should really find ways to engage and tap in with the community and tap in with people. And uh, so what I want to know is what strategies do you think have been most effective for you when, you know, you're building a community or when you were building your brand to starting out? Uh, building the brand in the community, well, definitely it, the artist was the, the first place to go. Um, getting involved in, I attend at least four music conferences a year. Mm -hmm. uh, I go to New Orleans to the Cutting Edge Music Conference, and that is like a family conference where all these artists come together and you get an opportunity to, to feel like a family. Yeah. You know, I've been going for six years, but that's one of the conferences I love because you feel like a family there. And conference is a great way to connect. But... For our, for our brand, that has been a really great way. But also, um, we, we pivot a lot. I tell my team, let's pivot. You know, we'll try something, and if it didn't work, for example, webinars and workshops worked really well in New York when we, were, we started off. Then we tried them here in a couple. We actually went to the studios. We sat there, and it was, hard, it was a little more challenging engaging the musicians to show up because they were both, they were hybrid. They were on Zoom, and you could come in in person. It was harder to get people to attend in person here in Miami. But then we said, decided, you know what? We're just going to leave every Monday night. You attend a webinar. Leave it on Eventbrite. If you sign up, then I'll have the webinar. Right. <laughs> I mean, simple as that. It sounds so silly. <laughs> but much. I left it every Monday there yeah. on Eventbrite. And anybody yeah. buys a ticket, I mean, I'm brutally honest. I speak as I think, you know, and I feel. And if someone signs up, then, hey, that's it's the night there. I'm doing the webinar, you know. And if no one signs up, then I don't do the webinar. And then that, that worked better. And then tonight, we started something new a month ago. It's every month. And it worked out wonderful. Uh, we do a pitch tonight. Nice. So if we're working on a briefs are what we get when we have to put something in a movie or a series. We get them from the film directors or the producers or the production company, wherever it may be. And um, we will, if we have a brief we're having, you know, challenges with finding music for, mm -hmm. then we have something called pitch night once a month. Tonight at 7 p.m., we have a pitch night. Oh, wow. Okay? Tonight. tonight. This is the night. Tonight. Oh, 7 man. p.m., we have pitch our monthly night. pitch go. night. And if you go to Eventbrite and you look for Sync Musica Pitch Night, you can um, submit your music. Now, you can attend, and it's free. And you get all the knowledge. It's free, totally free. If you want to submit your music, it's five bucks. Okay? And then you get considered for possibly your song being selected for that brief. If by some reason your song doesn't get selected the brief, we still listen to your music and consider it to put it in our catalogs for other opportunities. So there's a win-win. There's no lose nice. there. Everybody's getting something. Yeah. So I love it. that 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 um and that way of approaching things is really really worked. And l the first time we did the pitch night, we had thirty people. We say, hey, share your music and tell us something about you. I was like, it was amazing how many people within like the first few days had. And tonight we have about. Well, after this we may have more people. No, who knows? Uh, we have about five people that submitted. And it was for it's for a rom com, nice. and and we wanted a song that was about breakup and makeup. Ooh, so full circle. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it gives them an option, and we have some submissions. And even though the company is Latina owned by me, by by a female, by a woman, uh, we don't have as many female songwriters in our catalog, which it blows my mind. I I don't know if as women sometimes we. We're hesitant to kind of go, you know, I got this, you know. Guys are going, like, I get guys all the time to conferences come up, oh, take my song, here's my CD, here's my mm -hmm. mix. You know, I mean, they're just right right there. Um, so our ladies out there, send a shout to all my ladies out there. Please be confident with yourselves. Yeah, you got this, you key. can do this. Send your music. Be at the front of the line whenever you get to a conference and share your music because I'm looking for more singer-songwriters yeah. and artists, females. You know, we have a lot of males. And uh, and guys, and we have you know, groups. And then I also want to send a shout out to hip hop artists. I don't have a hip hop artist no in hip -hop our artists? catalog. What? Because we cannot place in sync placement music that has explicit lyrics. Okay. So I could see. I could fellas, see ladies, if you do hip hop, please get some clean versions of your songs. 
expand your opportunity. If you if you have explicit lyrics, you can keep them on those versions you do out when you perform. So make another but, version. Yes, right? do so another cool. version, please. I have oh, hip hop goodness. calling for all hip hop artists with clean of the lyrics or just doing a, a, a clean version because we really are wanting to expand that because it is a huge genre in films. It is. There's a huge demand for it. Mm. So you have nothing to lose. You're in that's, demand, so put it out there, you know? And um, and that's pretty much it. You know, th I think those are the branding strategies that have worked for us to be able, you know, the, our education, mm -hmm. services, and like you said, you said earlier a word. You said community. Community. Yes. It's all about so community. we have built a community. So if you have a song, you can submit it to us through our website, syncmusica.com, for $15 one song. But if you submit three songs for $25, you join the community automatically. There's no yearly fee, there's no additional fee. You get three songs considered and to put be put in the catalog. $55, you can get five songs in there. Now, what happens is once you become part of the community, we did the showcase in New Orleans in August it was. We reached out to our top five artists and the ones that couldn't make it, then we reached out to the next five. Right. We had an art artist from New York, we had artists from Miami, Kentucky, Chicago, New Orleans, and they we were the kickoff party. Sing Musica was handling the kickoff party for that conference. And the whole night our Sing Musica artists were performing. If you check out our Instagram, Sing Musica, you'll see that. And it was we give them opportunity for showcases to be seen in the right places. Yeah. Um, we give them an opportunity for oh, okay, so I am gonna brag a little bit, just a little bit. The biggest opportunity was uh, we submitted our artists for the Grammy, for your consideration, nice. I have to say. And for, and at the moment, five of our artists are for consideration currently for the, um, the five. Grammy. For five, for nice. consideration. And in all different genres, we've got pop, Americana roots, um, we have uh, uh, remixes by DJs, mm. um, we have, yeah. um, what else? I mean, there was several, several uh, indie alternative rock. So this is, and this is a great. So there's opportunities that will, will come up once you join our community. And community can support each other. It's extremely. We'll be going to be doing a master class, November twentieth. Just got Eventbrite. Look for a master class by Sing Musica. It's going to be with a female, artist that creates her own beats, mixes, masters. Okay, and she produces other artists, oh. other hip hop artists. That sounds like and, my guy Lee over here. Yeah, and she well, then you've got to meet her, and so she's going to be doing the, the master class, and that's going to be November twentieth, and that's something new. That's a new, um, thing we're going to starting where we can take our artists who have mates have had accomplishments, whether they be touring, accomplishments, or mixing, or helping other artists, and then we can, feature them in a master class. They can say what they do, show what they do maybe, and then later um, you can ask questions and answers. It's about exchanging. Yeah. You know, it's this kind of fluidity, synergy of exchanging with each other. Because just because I know sync doesn't mean I know more than you do. I mean, every day I learn from my artists. I learn from my interns. I learn from my team. And it's, it's an exchange. It, and if we look at it that way, in how we create music, how we speak with each other, how we share things, it's totally an exchange, a flu flowing exchange. That's beautiful. All right, so say I was a motivational speaker, right? I just made a track from my speech, okay. my top words of wisdom. It's about three minutes. I made two versions. I made one upbeat version for people to work out to, you know, and exercise. I made another version of my speech with some cinematic music behind it. And what I'm looking to do is get some sync opportunities. Where should I start? It's very interesting you should ask that question because one of the uh, newest um, artists that we just started doing um, a campaign for and he sent his music over for sync is Spoken Word. Ooh, that's and good actually, word. he is worship Spoken Word. Mm. He just got his song in a movie very recently a major film production and he he came he actually started as a filmmaker and he came to me as a mu 
as a spoken word musician, he said, I want to know how I, I do this. I said, simple, let's get your album going. Yes. And you said it earlier. Make an album. Yes. And he, he, he was the one that said, I want to do my album. I said, well, let's release some singles. No, I want to do my album. Okay, so then with your album, then we can get it out there. But meanwhile, we can take each single and pitch it for different opportunities. And he's doing so well right now. So you're telling me somebody is doing really well off of a spoken word and they're sending it for opportunities that are not on stage and not speaking engagements. Yes. Yes. One more time. So you're telling me somebody is making a spoken word from their speech and they're sending it for opportunities to maybe win a Grammy. Absolutely. This is real life right now. This right? is absolutely. I teach, when I teach about the industry, I, don't, I may not teach you like you'd learn in, you know, like when you go to university. I take what they learn in the university and apply it to the real world. That's how I teach. Beautiful. I love your style of teaching. <laughs> and I think you have just opened some eyes today. I, I hope so. I hope so. And in any shape, way, or form, that you know, as as I continue with the growth of Sing Musica, that I can help anybody out there, you know, go to my go to the website again, singmusica.com. I, I offer we'll consultations because the consultations, contrary to the webinar or workshop, I'm gonna, we're going to talk about you, and I'm going to talk exactly to what your need is, because you know, Sean, you're different than any other artist out there. You know, every artist is unique and different, and you have your own unique set of goals, your own unique set of challenges. Mm -hmm. And in a webinar, I'm addressing everybody. Mm -hmm. But in a one-on-one -on -one consultation, I can target exactly what it is that you want to accomplish. And I will give you real-life solutions. I'm not going to say, oh, go, go to a book, go to Google, go to ChatGPT. No, <laughs> I'm going to say, look... I love chat. <laughs> apply, apply this to real life, or maybe a couple of options. Apply this to real life. Mm -hmm. You know, I've stayed in this industry for twenty five years for a reason, because, uh, as my dear friend and producer Nomad would say, "Girl, you're always reinventing yourself." But I, I found the one that I want to stay with. You're nice. You know, I, I finally found, and it doesn't mean I stopped making music. I still make music. You know. Um, I still put up music myself as an artist. Uh, I feel that um, we're always creating, and we should never and we should never give up. I'm gonna send that shout out to artists out there that sometimes are thinking, "Oh no, I did it." We no. want to clip it. You, no, don't ever, don't ever, don't ever give up because you never know. The right when you're about to give up, that was that was when that opportunity you've been waiting for all your life was about right. to knock on the door. Goodness, people get they, they quit right when it's about to happen. Uh, that big breakthrough. Yeah. You have to have that same momentum, that same energy the whole time through. Even at the worst possible times, it seems like that That's blessing it. is just around the corner, you know? Absolutely. Those blessings are there. You know, keep the faith. It's been a pleasure to have you on this first official episode, you know, selling from the stage. I can't think of a better way to have started it, you know, with you know, opening the minds of about these sync opportunities, all of you know your greatness you're doing. Seven o'clock, you got that coming up. You guys make sure you know by the time this comes out, we're gonna have you're gonna do another one too, right? Yeah, we do the monthly, so yes. it's called Pitch Night with Sync Musica, Sync Musica Pitch Night, okay. once a month. Yes, Beautiful. make sure y'all check that out and don't forget to subscribe to uh, the podcast. Syncmusica.com oh, is where you can find out. Syncmusica.com. I'm going to edit it up there because I'm an editor. But yeah. Uh, other than that, you know, <laughs> this has been the first episode, Selling from the Stage. Excuse my handwriting, you know, um, but sh just like, comment, subscribe, and, you know, give me suggestions on uh, how to write better. I was not paying attention when we learned how to write, but <laughs> I know how to type. Let's go. Selling from the Stage. Guys, have a great day. Thank you, Sean. Thank you.